Hello, this is R-I-C-K-Y, the Android Guy. Alright guys, today I'm going to be talking about Google I.O. Conference 2012. There was a lot of announcements going on, so I'm going to break it up into segments. First of all, some achievements that Android made this year. Um, of course, Android 4.1, Jelly Bean. Need some Jelly Bean in your life, I'm just saying, you know, you need some Jelly Bean. Um, the Nexus 7, the big tablet on town for the lowest price you can get. Also, we're going to be talking a little bit about Nexus Q, not my favorite topic, and I'll tell you why. And then also Google Plus. Alright guys, let's get to it. Achievements. <laughs> Alright guys, achievements. What did Android achieve this year? Well, coming from last year where they only had about a hundred million active devices, they've now gone to four hundred million active devices. That means in just 2011 and 2012, thus far, 300 million activated devices. That is pretty amazing. Now, uh, not only that, but now they're up to the point where they're activating about one million devices per day. So, just if you do the math, that's about 12 devices per second. Twelve devices were just sold. Just saying. All right. Now another big achievement is they got six hundred thousand apps. Now you have six hundred thousand apps in the store, and about a hundred thousand more free apps compared to Apple. So just saying. All right. And lastly, they have had over twenty billion apps installed. So some pretty nice achievements for Google. Some pretty nice achievements. And you know what else is a good achievement? Some jelly bean. Yeah. Let's go check it out. Jelly Bean. Alright guys, so it's time to talk about Jelly Bean. Jelly Bean is Android 4.0. It's the newest operating system that's going to come out mid-July. So, um, what is new with Jelly Bean? Well, we have some pretty cool stuff. First of all, it is Project Butter. Project Butter is pretty cool because what it does is it makes your Android faster. So this will basically tune up your Android devices and give it a really nice uh, kind of, you know, quick to zap kind of look and feel. Now, if you haven't used Android 4.0 to begin with, you're missing out because Android 4.0 is a huge speed difference compared to 2.3 or 3.0. So it's already a huge improvement, but it's just making that next step. So it mainly specializes in transitions and when you're using low CPU power to high CPU power. Basically, it just makes it faster. These are all the technical stuff to tell you what exactly those are but it just makes it faster, so that's the plain and simple version of it. Now, my favorite part, guys, is offline voice typing. Yes, guys, you finally can do offline voice typing, so when you're sending a text message and you don't have data, or, you know, you really wouldn't do it for Facebook or Twitter because you need internet for that. But I'm just saying, if you need to send a text message, you know, now you're, you're, you're good, you're good. So it's really nice because you don't have to rely on having internet to use it, it's pretty nice. It's the first operating system to actually do it offline voice typing. The other thing is quick photo review. So now when you take a photo, you can actually just swipe to the side and actually see the photo and then just swipe up to delete it. So if you take a bunch of photos, you can actually just really quickly delete it. Pretty nice, convenient. Just a nice little tweak to the photo part. Android Beam has gotten a nice update. It is now more like S uh, Beam. So if you have Galaxy S3, you already know from my videos that you can actually pair two S3s come next to each other and it sends uh, any photo or video directly to it. Now you can also do this with Android Beam. So you can share your photos and videos really easy and very quickly. And FC makes it happen very quickly. So definitely a nice touch for it. Now what you also have is new notifications. Notifications, which is uh, was born on Android, not on any of these other operating systems that are trying to take it, but failing miserably. Um, I'm just saying. Uh, so with Android, uh, with uh, Android, notifications have gotten better. So when you have like a call or anything like that come in, you can actually expand it with two fingers, uh, kind of like a pinch to zoom gesture. And when you have it there, then you get more options. So whether it be your Google Plus and you expand it to see the full photo on your notification, whether it be to see you have four emails, you can actually see who they're from. And uh, when you have a call, you can actually expand it to either call them back or message them for later. So it's pretty cool and it's really, it's really something you should definitely see in person. It's just really nice for it. And with that, now we have the next segment, which is search. Let's check it out. So search is obviously something Google's a little bit good at. I'm just saying, you know, they're pretty good at search. 
Uh, so they're actually expanding it this time around. So what they did is they didn't go the Siri route, like the smart assistant kind of thing. They more just improved their general search uh, to basically better answer questions uh, that people have. So the first thing they did is they're using Knowledge Graph, which is something that launched a little while back. And Knowledge Graph is basically so you can ask questions about someone or something and it gives you an answer, kind of like Wolfman and Alpha, which is what Siri uses um, and S Voice uses. So uh, with this though, basically it gives you answers um, based on what you ask. So say if you ask like, what's the tallest mountain in the world, it'll actually just reply to you what the tallest mountain in the world does and then have a Google search under it. And first of all, let me tell you, it's a beautiful new UI. I mean, the interface on this looks amazing. It's like white cards, it just really looks very elegant and really just uh, well done. Not only that, but the voice, um, the voice now replies to the answer. Um, so how that's pretty good is because it just sounds so natural. It doesn't sound a computerized voice like Siri or any of these other assistants out there. It actually sounds like a natural person speaking back to you. Which, you know, just really brings a human element to it all, really. Now, how they also expand on this search part is called Google Now. Google Now basically takes the searches you do and makes it so that it helps out your life. So how you access this now is from swiping from the bottom of the screen to the top of the screen. So this is how you bring Google Now up. And what Google Now does is it brings sections of, in cards of information that it thinks you'll find useful. Now, what do these cards do? Well, for instance, navigation. If um, you normally go somewhere at this time, like say your friend's house or your girl's house, or even if you normally go home at this time, or you go to work at this time, whatever places you typically go, it'll have directions for you as soon as you slide it up and tell you how long it's going to take you to get there. If you have an appointment at a certain location, it'll actually tell you when you should leave because of how traffic is. So this is all that just doing in the background because it knows, it learns your habits and all that to better assist you. So it's pretty cool. I mean, I would love to know when to leave for work because honestly, you know, sometimes you get late, sometimes you miss out. I'm just saying, just kidding boss, I would never be late to work. <laughs> uh, other things it helps you out with is uh, things like flights. It'll actually tell you where your terminal is as well as um, constantly have updates on if you have delayed flight or anything like that. Now, another thing it helps you out with is things like Google Places. So if you're in a new location or just in a city, it'll actually tell you places that it thinks you might like uh, based on searches you've done. So if you search for sushi, for instance, it'll come up with the latest sushi places that are nearby where you are. So you can actually see it. Um, and if you've never used places before, you can even see if it's open now. Fun features like that. Again, improved UI on that as well. Also, you can even see sports. So sports, you can see like live updates. If you ever search a team, it'll know it. So like for me, if I ever search the Anaheim Angels or LA Lakers or something like that, it would automatically know that when the game's on, I would just swipe up and there would be the live score. I don't have to search for it. I don't have to tell it what to do. It just knows because I've searched for it before on Google. So everything you search for on Google basically will kind of help it uh, better assist you. Now, of course, before you get kind of nervous around that, you can turn Google Now off if you really are, you know, phobic about the whole privacy thing. But really, it's just helping you kind of better assist you in your life. So I don't see it as a problem. But if you're phobic about it, you know, then don't have the man watch you and all that. I mean, it's not a man, it's an Android, but just saying. Um, now Google Play has gone through a little bit of an overhaul. Now this is kind of like for everyone, not just uh, Jello Bean 4.1, but I'm just going to touch a little bit on it. Uh, the updates were, um, it's now going to have smart app updates, which means that you won't have to re-download the entire app, you're just going to download the new addition to that app. So you're not going to download the entire app anymore, it's just only going to be an addition, which means you're going to save on downloading time, it's going to be automatic, and just a lot easier for us users, so thank God for that. Um, so that'll be really cool. For movies, now you can purchase movies instead of just renting them, which is something that I want to do for a long time. I personally like Netflix or to be able to buy digital movies. I don't like the whole renting thing, so purchasing is great for me. As well as TV shows. Now you can actually uh, watch TV shows on Google Movies, so that's a new plus. And they did add magazines. Magazines is pretty cool because now you can read your favorite magazines. Uh, I don't particularly read magazines, I more read articles. But if you're into reading magazines, it's pretty cool. And you get 14-day trials for these magazines. 
So it's pretty cool. You can see how you like the magazine and if you like the experience and see if it's good for you. Alright, now guys, on magazines, where would it be great to view it at? Well, I would say the next seven tablet it would be great to view on. Let's check it out. Alright guys, so the Nexus 7. Uh... Alright guys, so this is a pretty amazing tablet. You have an 8 gigabyte going for $199 and a 16 gigabyte going for $249. So what makes it so great? Get into that in a second. First let me tell you what you get free with it, because we all like free stuff. So if you pre-order from uh, Google right now, you do get a $25 Google Play Store credit to use on anything in the store. Whether it be apps, games, movies, music, books, magazines, whatever you want, you can use it to buy it. The other thing, you get some free stuff too. They give you a free movie, uh, Transformers, Dark Side of the Moon, so if you haven't seen it, or if you have seen it, you get a free movie. Hey, who's complaining? You get a free book and a free magazine too. I didn't really get down which ones were they, but you know, you get some free stuff. I'm just saying, you get free stuff. Uh, the other cool thing is it comes out of the box with the Jelly Bean Android 4.1. So that's really cool, of course, because we have the latest version of Android. It also has a 1280 by 800 HD display. This is the same display that we've seen on devices such as um, the 10 inch tablets from last year for Android. So this is pretty impressive because you get a lot better pixel density and it does have a better pixel density than any other 7 inch tablet on the market. So that's really cool for that one. Now the big thing, it has a Tegra 3 quad core for a $199 price point. That is ridiculous. You have an amazing, uh, you have an amazing uh, quad core processor plus a 12 core graphics card. So it's pretty incredible that it has that as well. It's just an all around great thing. Now, battery life, it supposedly has nine hours of video playback, which is ridiculous. Um, in tests that they've shown though now, afterward, just like you know, they've shown it go about 10 hours on regular. Now, it could have been that the Tegra 3 was using all quad core, and if you put it down to dual core, it'll last longer. Just uh, letting you know the differences that you see out on the field, because they don't always switch it the way they should. Um, now, the other part is, you also have 300 hours of standby time, so it's a pretty long standby time. It is actually lighter than a pound, so it is 0.75 pounds, so really light, very easy to use. It has nice features like a, um, a built-in Shazam, so what's this song, you tap the widget and it finds it for you, so that's pretty cool. You have also Chrome as a stock browser, it is a stock browser that comes out of the box with it now, and um, just some really nice features like that. They did show a demo of a horn game uh, that's supposed to come out with it as well, and it looks just amazing. Uh, the graphics on it looked really incredible. If you can see a demo video of it, I suggest you look it up and check it out. All right, guys, let's move on to the Nexus Q. All right, guys, now, this isn't my favorite part of the conference, but I'll tell you about it. Nexus Q. Nexus Q is a little, you know, it's, it's, a, great, it's a great concept, but I just, the price was what got to me. So let me tell you about what it does first. First of all, it's kind of like a small computer. It has the ability to actually process a lot of things. It has the same processor that the Galaxy Nexus had. So really good uh, built-in stuff. The only thing is, it is not a standalone device at this time. There's already some good promise in terms of hacking it, but at this time it's not a standalone device. So what the purpose is, it's a, built, it's a speaker that uh, basically is supposed to be stronger than most uh, home dock speakers out right now and you activate it using NFC by touching it on the um, device. Now, you can also use it through Wi-Fi, um, but the first time you connect it, you just need to do it through NFC. Now, it has lots of ports like micro USB, it has ports like uh, micro HDMI, uh, component ports, and optical uh, cable. So basically, you can hook this up to your TV to um, transfer over movies from your devices, as well as uh, you can hook up to home theater systems to transfer over music to your devices. So it's pretty cool overall, but the main thing is, is that it's a $299 price tag. So I feel like uh, things like the All Share Cast dongle from Samsung for their S3 and other DLNA devices like Blu-ray players would be a better fit right now. I really like the concept, but the reason why it had to be so uh, priced up a little higher than everything else right now is because everything was made in the US, which is really nice for our economy. I personally feel proud to own it. If I do get it, um, I will get it for that reason more so but it is definitely a little more, more expensive. All right guys, let's go on to Google Plus. So what's, this, what's new with Google Plus? Well, Google Plus has had a UI change 
in terms of its phones uh, just recently and now I have another update to make it really look smooth when you're scrolling up. As well as you have a really nice uh, display on tablets now. They now made like an HD version so it'll look really good in terms of tablets. Now the other addition has been that you actually have Google Plus events now which you can send to not only people that have Google Plus but also people that just have a Gmail account. It's a really nice uh, looking kind of like an evite uh, on Google Calendar. That's the best way to describe it. Just a really nice graphic over the calendar invite date. But now, uh, for anyone that was invited to that uh, um, event, you actually have another important part, which is something called party mode. So if you're invited to this event and you turn your phone on during that time, you can actually tap the calendar or Google Plus and then you can enter party mode. Now the cool thing about party mode is that everyone that takes a photo at that party, all the photos will then join together on Google Plus so everyone can see them. And you get to see who took it, you know, what photographers took it, and um, just all your photos everyone took for that event. So if you have a wedding, if you have a birthday party, all your photos will be in one place and everyone can reminisce on the times. Alright, now this was interrupted by an event called Google Glass. So, how did Glass turn out? Well, let's see. Alright, so Google Glass did a pretty crazy stunt at the conference. So, basically what they did is, they had guys jump out of a plane, go on mountain bikes, climb down the side of the building, and go on bikes again just to deliver a package. And the package was Google Glass. So, they recorded all of this with using Google Glass on their head. So, Google Glass is basically is kind of the basically what smartphones could be later on. It's something, a device that goes right on your head, like glasses, and has one glass on the side where you can actually see everything. So you can actually see if you're, uh, who you're chatting with and everything like that. It basically projects like an image kind of thing. And it's pretty cool in just how it works, and it's all lighter than a regular pair of sunglasses. So it's a pretty cool concept. It showed a hangout of everyone skydiving and all the stunts that were being pulled, and they did this all live and delivered the package inside the building. So it's pretty cool to jump out of a plane above it and do all that. Um, it's going to be released to developers uh, for $1,500 uh, for next year. So nothing for us yet, but they're hoping to get it to consumers by 2014. Alright guys, so thank you for watching. This has been the Ask the Android Guy recap on uh, everything Google Conference 2012. So uh, thank you for watching. If you haven't joined it already, join my channel so you get all the updates on the latest Android devices. Alright, thank you for watching. This has been RCKY. The Android guy.